Labour Senator Sam Dastyari finally uh, succumbed to the uh, public uh, and also internal pressure and resigned uh, from the Senate uh, last Tuesday. Now, however, this won't uh, take effect until uh, early next year, which means he'll still be drawing a, a taxpayer uh, salary for that time. Uh, basically, the, the death blow was uh, dealt the day before on Monday, where two Labour frontbenchers, uh, Catherine King and Linda Burney, said that you know Sam should um, consider his position. And when, you're, when your own side uh, start to say things like that, that's pretty much... Uh, the end, and it's it's a pretty big scalp uh, for the term of government because you know as we know you know Destiari was you know, uh, a major you know power broker in the uh, New South Wales right of the the Labor Party. He he was referred to uh, as a protected species because he survived uh, so, so many times over this uh, China scandal, but he's he's gone now, and yes, he certainly won't be missed. That's right, I. I mean, it, it took Shorten so many attempts to, for with calls to to get rid of him, and he just wouldn't do it. I mean, it um, it was just, oh yeah, I'll I'll just put him aside for now, and then you know, in six months later, I'll promote him back when everyone forgets. So, I mean, this this is the amount of influence this guy had. I mean, that's the Ari, uh, why he was so important and uh, why Shorten wouldn't take action was because that's the Ari was a big supporter of Shorten and one, was one of the key, uh, the key figures that ended up putting Shorten in his role as opposition leader. So, I mean, Shorten had a debt to pay to, um, to Dastiari. This, this is unfortunately how the political system works. And, I mean, it's, um, it, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's funny, but it's, it's just so sad in, in a way that, that they act like this. It's, uh, so, I mean, yeah, he won't, miss, he won't be missed for sure. I mean, he was really just... Um, a, a good laugh for the opposition. I mean, um, people opposing the Labor side of politics. So any any of the the right wingers, the nationalists, like you mentioned. Um, and I mean, he was someone that was very hypocritical of a person. Like, um, especially on the issue where um, he sometimes called himself a Muslim, sometimes he called himself an atheist, and he basically used this as a um, as a game just as a card to um, call himself a Muslim when he wanted to act like a victim. But then in general, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true blue, you know, Aussie atheist that, you know, has a drink at the pub and all that sort of thing. So when you get politicians acting like this, it's just fake, non-genuine. People can see through it. And his connections, obviously, with um, New South Wales, uh, the, the past dealings with many of the other politicians, um, it, it just it just says how corrupt the guy is, really. I mean, um, he, he really didn't have a, a good history, and he was parachuted into uh, federal politics, and even when he was in Parliament, he, he didn't really do a good job in uh, being able to convince people that he was um, to, be such, um, to be in such a high position for, for the talent that he was supposed to have. And it was quite easy to see through that he was there because he was put there. Uh, by particular people in the party. Uh, he was one of the ver worst uh, virtue signalers in the parliament. You know, he, uh, you know, of... Oh, uh, Probably Pauline Hanson was, you know, his greatest uh, a adversary in the parliament saying, oh, you know, how horrible and, you know, bigoted she is. And like, look at these, you know, conservatives, you know, they're so, you know, racist and homophobic. And he did all those, uh, I'm not sure if you remember those, you know, Facebook videos where he'd have the, you know, background behind him, you know, mocking, you know, mm. one, one nation uh, candidates. And then, of course, don't forget there was his, you know, stupid book, uh, you know, One Halal of a Story, uh, which he he decided to get uh, halal certified uh, from that uh, Muhammad El Mahoney guy, who, as we remember, uh, wanted to uh, wanted Muslim men to uh, fertilize uh, Australian women. So you know that that that, that was a good one from him. <laughs> uh, I think his uh, sequel uh, to One Halal of a Story will be uh, One Shall Min of a Story. Hmm. I think Sam Dastyari um, will, will be known to, to be someone that achieved nothing, uh, was basically uh, placed there uh, because of his connections rather than his talent, and uh, was somebody that went through many scandals, um, just did nothing to the for the people of Australia and New South Wales in general, 
And also, as you said, was somebody that really chose the lowest common denominator when it came to um, to playing games, when it, when it came to uh, virtual signaling, um, basically playing the victim, always, uh, you know, calling his opponents racist, um, homophobic, xenophobic, uh, um, very, very green-like, really, even, um, j- just to, um, to, to, to take that position, rather than a, uh, a debate on facts and, and, and actual policy, just to, to go the easy bait way, the easy bait road and, you know, oh, yeah, let's just attack people's um, character and, and, um, and call them names and, and, and hopefully people in the electric can buy it. So, uh, I mean, he, he just really was, was such a failure as a, as a political... Um, I mean, this guy was, had so many aspirations. I mean, you know, people would say, oh, that he's going to be leader one day, he's going to be, you know, some sort of um, big player. And he, he just shot himself in the foot so many times and, you know, damaged the party, really. Uh, and uh, let's not forget that it was uh, only last month when uh, Australian Patriot activist Neil Erickson and his uh, Patriot uh, Blue uh, crew confronted uh, Dessiari in a Melbourne uh, bar over his uh, chi- uh, China connections. And this was actually before the latest revelations uh, came out. And of course, you know, he you know played the victim after that, you know, poor me, I'm being picked on and media was like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, how outrageous, you know, these, you know, horrible you know nationalists and that and then there was you know also the um yeah one of uh, sam's mates there saying well you know i'm going to report you to uh your uh, your employer uh you know obviously sam you know thought he was on to a winner uh on that one but it turns out that neil erickson and the other nationalists that he's mocked over the years of you know had the last laugh sam's out on his ass unemployed well um you know the the nationalists they were they were right yeah, I'll say this much: he won't be unemployed for that much longer. <laughs> it won't. It won't take him long for him to get a put, uh, a very very cushy job, as they all do. Um, this is how it works: no matter how hopeless they are, no matter what scandals they've been through, no matter how much damage they've caused. Oh yeah, you're a labour guy. No worries, we'll we'll fix you up. We'll uh, we'll we'll give you like a, a cushy, you know, a um, couple hundred grand job a year that um, you can you know sit on your ass and uh, basically. Uh, uh, be a pen pusher, and um, th- this is how it works. So he's definitely it's not going to worry him. He was always somebody that didn't really have principles, that didn't have uh, strong values. I mean, no matter what side you look at in politics, you can always spot a genuine person to a fake person. I mean, you look at someone like Shorten. I mean, he every time you talk, you know he's just full of crap. I mean, he's got no no sense of passion in what he's saying. Whereas someone like Albanese is very different. He's more passionate in his views. I mean, and then on the right side of politics, you know, you've also got people like, um, um, for instance, uh, Abbott and um, Christensen, and they're, they're, they're very um, passionate in, in what they speak of. And, and then you've got others that just seem to go with the flow. And, and I mean, Turnbull is a clear example that, you don't know really where he stands on things. He seems to flip flop around. Doesn't really. Um, you can't really say he is there and has strong values and and, uh, and he's pushing for a, a particular way through the parliament. He's he's just. Um, they just seem to be there for the the power play for the for the opportunity, the money, and not not for being there for the people of Australia. And this this is the thing. No matter what happens to them, they always end up getting a nice job afterwards. So they have nothing to worry about. Uh, well, there's there was already a reports uh, before he resigned that he was exploring a, a future career in uh, media. Which you know, even though he's uh, resigned from the parliament, we still have to um, might put up with him on our TV screens in the future. Who knows? We might see you know Dasher on uh, you know one of the the news networks uh, soon, where he'll you know just be up to his you know usual antics again. The the sad thing about it is that he's he's a really poor performer. I mean, he's, it's it's not like we can actually say that. Oh, you know, we 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 hate him, we disagree with him, but he's actually you know good at what he does. He's actually really poor at what he does. So I mean, it, it's like you get someone off the street. 
that is uh, very biased in a particular um, political platform, and, and you just get him to rant. And, and that's what he does. He just rants on about things that he doesn't like. He's not very professional. He's, he's not a, a good performer in any way or a talent. So for him to be in a media role, it's, it's quite laughable. I mean, it's going to be as cringeworthy as people like Waleed Ali and, you know, um, uh, Koch and O'Keefe and all the rest of them. It's, 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 I mean, he'll get a job. No, no worries about that. I mean, the ABC will hire him in a heartbeat. But, um, it's, it's just going to be, uh, very cringeworthy. I think a lot of people are going to have a good laugh seeing him, uh, in a media position. He just clearly doesn't have the talent. I mean, you might dislike people like Tony Jones or Lee Sales, but they're actually good at what they do. I mean, they are talented. We might disagree with their political leanings, but with Sam Dastyari, he has no talent at all. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.